Nurses follow science. And we are privileged to be in a profession where uh, research and evidence is valued and is pers pursued. And so as we practice nursing, what we practice is based on the evidence that people have done in research that has guided how we practice. So it's not just based on a feeling or based on you know, your own in individual experience, but we're able to draw from a vast amount of evidence and research to support how nurses practice today. So today we're gonna be talking about evidence and evidence-based practice. We're gonna be in Giddens chapter 47 for this lecture and you'll need concept guide version A um, as you go through this, this course today. Here are the objectives for our class today, um, defining and describing this idea of evidence-based practice, recognizing how do we recognize good quality evidence and what does this mean to apply evidence to nursing practice? So let's go ahead and get into this by really defining and describing the concept of evidence. Evidence is really a legal term um, and it's a testimony of facts that tend to prove or disprove a conclusion. And so it's a, an establishment of fact. And we can apply this establishment of fact to nursing in evidence-based nursing. In other words, it's this ongoing process that nurses use theory and evidence and research to provide the best care for the individual. So we take this whole conglomerate of evidence-based research and knowledge and, and facts and apply it to the individual needs of our patients. So while there's a baseline understanding of what is fact and what is evidence-based, there's certainly still wiggle room um, ambiguity for how that's going to be applied to a specific patient. So let's talk about what is different between evidence and data. So evidence could be synonymous with things like attestation, confirmation, testimony, and it's scrutinized by comparing it to other information to determine if it's reliable and valid. Data, on the other hand, is just pure information. So evidence is information used to establish fact and it is scrutinized. Data is just pure information. It's just raw information and it's not scrutinized to establish fact. So we have to recognize if something is really evidence or if it's just data and information. Now, in order to practice evidence-based nursing, you have to know what's good quality evidence. How do you find a study that has good conclusions and, and the study is done in a way that the evidence itself is going to give you valid uh, results? Now, in terms of research, there's a couple of different kinds of research we can talk about. Um, Bench or discovery research is the things that are done at the molecular or the cellular level. Those are research studies that are done in a lab. Translational research really talks about what does this mean at the bedside? How does this impact patient care? And then ultimately it reaches patient care and influences how patient care is accomplished. And this scope can really go both ways. Sometimes we notice something at the bedside in patient care that we're then able to research and then figure out why that is working or not working in practice. So here are some attributes of evidence, things that make evidence reliable and something that we can trust as true. First is that it's rep is replicability. Can you repeat those results in other studies? If you can't, then there might be have something been sent wrong with your study. Is it reliable? Are the findings consistent uh, with similar, is a treatment, for example, given for similar disorders also leading to the same outcomes? So is it consistent in a more broad um, perspective? And then is it valid? Is, is the results accurate uh, from in, in the application and in the findings? Now, evidence can have different levels of validity and reliability. And there's checklists we can use to determine the level of evidence. And that gives us an idea of the quality of evidence and maybe to take it with a grain of salt if it's not as a high level of quality. Um, and so we can grade on evidence uh, provided based on practice guidelines. So a grade A is that the evidence is very well recommended and highly reliable. A B, it's pretty good. C, there's no recommendation either way. 
grade D recommends against it. In other words, you know, no matter what this study says, for one reason or another, you shouldn't really trust that is true. Or grade I means just insufficient. There just wasn't enough evidence to recommend for or against the findings of that study. So why does this matter? Why does research and evidence matter to nursing? Well, let's take a step back and look at history and some of the implications that evidence and research has had on our profession. So early on in healthcare, you can see examples of research and evidence. Florence Nightingale, the, the uh, figurehead of, of early nursing, decreased infection rates in the Crimean War with infection control practices. And Semmelweis noted that the patients had less fevers after giving birth because of hand washing. And then Cochrane, which we now know is like the Cochrane papers, the Cochrane studies are very high level uh, journal research articles. Um, Cochrane first used randomized control trials to incorporate more evidence in the medical profession. And so early on, we're seeing glimmers and glimpses of how evidence was being applied in healthcare. And really the ultimate uh, response was that patients had better outcomes. And that's really the goal of evidence. Now there's two main types of evidence. There's primary literature, it's generated from original research and secondary literature, which kind of combines and summarizes a variety of different research to show some new perspective on a topic. And so qualitative and quantitative research are the types of primary literature. And so primary literature can be divided into quantitative and qualitative research. Quantitative are things that are easily defined and measured, where qualitative are things that aren't really measured by data, but are more recording things like patients' experiences. And then you can have mixed design, which is going to incorporate some of qualitative and quantitative research. Now, secondary evidence, on the other hand, is going to be uh, compiling the summaries of many different studies. They can result in practice guidelines, giving information on how nurses should practice in general based on all of the evidence on that topic. They can have evidence summaries or systematic reviews and meta-analysis, which is really powerful because it finds all of the different research on one specific topic and summarizes it and pulls it together to see what's the best evidence out there right now. And with COVID-19, we were seeing a lot of meta-analyses and even some AI that try to pull together the best of the brightest of research from all around the world to create these high-level systematic reviews to really see if there's any trends in the literature on how to treat people. And you'll see in the little pyramid in the corner of your screen that systematic reviews and meta-analysis are the highest level of validity and reliability because they're pulling together trends from so many different studies and analyzing each one of those and critiquing them along the way. So you'll see that in that pyramid, it kind of grades different types of research studies as better than the other in terms of validity and reliability. So it's kind of important to know when you're looking at research on what kind of research study are you looking at? And then there's the question of bias. Uh, there was that supersized video about, about back in the early 2000s that came out about McDonald's and McDonald's had done funded some studies and the result of the study showed that no, soda drinking soda doesn't increase your chance of diabetes. No, so drinking soda doesn't increase your chance of obesity. But if you dug a little bit farther, uh, you could look and see that that study was actually funded by McDonald's. And so, you know, who, where's the money, follow the money can really give you an indication of bias. And also that study was inconsistent with other studies similar on similar topics. So that raised some red flag, but bias is a disproportionate tendency toward or against an idea. And people can develop biases for one reason or another and bias can influence results. And so you have to have evidence graded to determine its legitimacy and strong ev evidence is going to be free of, or at least accounted for bias, meaning recognize that there is bias, but they did something to make sure that that didn't impact the results of their study. So really, um, I think if you're, if you're a Hamilton uh, fan, there's a, 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 a quote in the, 
in the Hamilton musical that says, follow the money and see where it leads. And so really that's the same thing for bias and evidence, follow the money, where, who got the funding for that study and see where that leads. And if that could um, produce any uh, potential bias for the study results. So nursing is involved heavily in research. We need our own set of standards and our own research, not just relying on medical data, but we need nursing research. And so nursing researchers are a position that are out there. And there's many different roles that you can have in research, such as a prevent principal investigator of a study or a data collection or data anal analyst. Um, and you can even do, you can do research at big high levels that's gonna be published. But even little hospitals often will do small research projects on their units um, to really put out a new uh, product or to try out something new and see how it goes on their unit and analyze the data. So if you're interested in research, there's a, there is a place for you in nursing as, as a researcher as well. So that we can be researchers and create evidence, or we can be consumers of evidence, which means that we need to read evidence and understand evidence. Um, we can read this through policies and procedures. Policies and procedures are going to be a part of any healthcare institution and are regularly updated to reflect current evidence. And oftentimes these policies and procedures then have to go through a committee that reviews them, comparing them to the most up-to-date research to make sure that the evidence is supported. And so when you're working um, at a hospital or even as a nursing school, if you're looking to do some research, it usually arises because you're trying to find answers to a practice question or problem, some problem involving patient care or nursing practice that needs to be resolved. And so you're gonna develop an answerable question. What do I need to know? What am I trying to learn? Then you're gonna search the literature, evaluate the evidence to see if the evidence is valid and, and strong. Then you're gonna apply the evidence to your practice setting and then evaluate, did it work or did it not? And that's just the basic uh, process for having a practice question and using evidence-based research to guide your practice. And when we're in class, we're gonna be talking about how do we apply this? How do we look for good research? And how do we analyze that on a very basic level? And so in class, we're gonna be talking about how to conduct a literature research. You can get ahead of us a little bit here if you wanna go ahead and read this in your Giddens text and we'll be talking about this in class. Now we know not everything on the internet is true, but there can be things that we're gonna search the internet for to find evidence. So how do you know if evidence on the internet is true? Well, you're gonna look at the author and the sponsor of the information. Remember, we're following the money and seeing where it leads. You're going to determine the, the domain. So a .edu, a .gov, or a .org are most likely going to be higher levels of evidence than something that's just randomly put on the internet. You know, you can go buy a domain tomorrow for $8 and put whatever you want there. And then you're going to look for currency. So you want to look for the date. And not everything on the internet is dated. And so it's very careful. You have to be careful with things that are not dated because we want to look for evidence that's something in the last five years because things change. Um, there is a uh, acronym in your Giddens text on 449 for a checklist that can help evaluate the online information. It's called the CRAP test. Is it current? Is it relevant? Who is the authority of the speaker? Do we know if it's accurate? And what was the purpose of the information being put on the internet in the first place? Now, evidence is what's going to drive nursing practice. It's going to what it's going to keep us safe. It's going to drive healthcare economics as we look for ways to cut costs and make healthcare more efficient. It's certainly going to drive policy as we want our health policies to be informed by the latest and greatest research and evidence. And then technology and informatics are a way that we are able to understand evidence and access it. One of the things we're gonna do in class is talk about the incredible search engines that Morton College has purchased for uh, medical and nursing journal articles. And that's all technology. It gives us the best of the world's journal articles on nursing at our tip of our fingertips, which is something we take for granted these days, just the accessibility of evidence information. 
And finally, there's a list of featured exemplars. But what I really want you to take out of this is that you understand that nursing practice is is driven by evidence, that it's not just a feeling and it's not just something randomly put in a textbook, but it's all based on research and evidence that is summarized um, and, and analyzed to make sure that the, the answers are valid and reliable and trustworthy, and that those evidence bodies are what drive nursing process. So when we're in class, what we're going to do is start looking at how to do these literature searches and then how to just analyze the literature on a basic level to, to see if it is trustworthy and reliable and something that we can use to guide our practice. I can't wait to get into it with you and I will see you in class.